Okay, so I have Dr. Gina Leeshing here. You've seen her on the Gene Food blog, and she is are currently helping us out with a lot of research projects and um, you know helping with the scoring system and the algorithm. Dr. Gina, could you just give the the audience a, just a small little intro on your background? You're doing some pretty heavy hitting research at Trinity College Dublin. It sounds like. Thanks for having me. So my background is that I'm a physiologist and I'm very interested in diseases. I got my PhD at, at Stellenbosch University in South Africa. And then I proceeded to do a postdoc on TB disease. I then moved over to Dublin, um, where I'm a research fellow at Trinity College. And my interests are in you know, metabolism and how immune cell metabolism and any dysregulation in that process leads to disease, specifically autoimmune disorders and TB. You did some research for us and wrote a piece on um... Calm T warriors versus warriors. What's the top level issue there that people need to know about when they're looking at this particular SNP? So there's, there isn't issues per se, but what we think, what we know is that when you say, oh, I'm a risk taker, or I have this personality or that personality, we don't actually realize that these traits are etched in our genes and they make us either adrenaline driven or a warrior. So when I say warrior, I mean this, and when I say warrior, I mean this. So. What happens in the frontal part of our brain, dopamine is released. And when dopamine is released, it controls our moods and our characteristics and our decision making. So with the pump gene, um, what happens is as soon as dopamine is released into your frontal cortex, this comp gene will then degrade the dopamine so that the perfect concentration of dopamine can bind to the neurons in your brain and allowing you to feel or behave a certain way. So what they found with this comp gene is that if you have SNPs, which are, we all have the comp gene, but all of us have got variations of the gene. So you can have one variation, which will make you prone to risky behaviors and adrenaline junkies and that sort of behavior or, or aggressive behavior or impulsive behavior. Whereas another variation of the gene makes you a warrior. So to anxiety, you can't be in emotionally stressful situations. And then there's the rest of us who are in the middle who don't necessarily seek out risky behaviors, and we are just, I would say, normal, non risk taking people. So if we go into it, there's a very recent study in the Journal of Sports Science and Medicine. What they did was they got a group of eight MMA fighters. And they did a, they, they took out their DNA, they sequenced it, and they looked for these variants in the comp gene. Then they took a group of individuals who were not MMA fighters and who were very unlikely to engage in MMA, MMA fighting. And what they found was that these MMA um, artists all had the warrior phenotype. So they all had GG phenotype. Because all the controls did not. So they concluded that they also did some stress tests on these people on the MMA fighters and they found that they have a much higher resilience to stress. They do not really get anxiety. They've got a higher pain threshold and making them more likely to engage in combat sports. Which is just as an aside, which is incredible. As an MMA fan, I, you know, I, during COVID, the only sport that was on during COVID in the U.S. was MMA, basically UFC. So I became a huge UFC fan during COVID because I'm a big sports fan. And I watched these guys come out and walk out to, to the cage to fight, like like do the walk. Like either it's an, you know, yeah. when they fight at the UFC Apex, it's a, there's no crowd. But some of the, some, I mean, there's a, there's a full packed house and these guys, guys and girls come out, walk down to the cage, you know, get checked by the physician one last time and step in. And they can perform and they have no fear. The bravery is incredible. Insane. It's anyway. So, and you're saying that basically what researchers have found is that, that there's a common genetic trait that all these MMA fighters have, which has to do with how they metabolize dopamine. Now in the, what I wasn't clear on when I looked at the study was, so the MMA fighters, they're metabolizing dopamine more quickly or they're metabolizing dopamine more slowly too slowly so they have too much dopamine binding to their neurons making them hyper it's like not necessarily on a high but you brave you you happy you almost on an adrenaline high whereas people who are the warriors 
their dopamine gets metabolized too quickly and they don't have enough. And what they found was that um, with the warriors, they are prone to depressive disorders. So they uh, need prone to what disorders? Depressive disorders. Now, just to just to make it clear that there are a myriad of of things that can cause depression. Having um, this this um, variation in your company may make you susceptible, but it's not the only factor that obviously will bring about depression. And why would that be? So, because when I'm hearing you talk about, you know, you have this genetic variant that basically makes you so bulletproof that you can walk out into a cage fight and be relatively calm and your cortisol is, is low and you're feeling good. I think to myself, I mean, I was just going to say like, we kind of all wish we had that, right? Like you're walking through life sort of like impervious to some of the danger and that, that I would, I would assume that that would give you kind of a mental edge, but it sounds like there's sort of like a, like a dark side to this. So the dopamine is metabolized slower, but what happens once it gets metabolized, it stays low for a period. Like where does the depression come in? Like from a neuro the depression comes in, in, in the people who are the warriors. Oh, I see. So okay. Okay. I got you. The warriors are the ones when you're metabolizing because I, I was misunderstanding. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So the people who worry, who have anxiety, who can't deal with emotional, um, stressful situations when their dopamine is metabolized too quickly, is not enough binding. It's the same with serotonin in people who are depressed. It's too little binding to the receptors. So so, so we, we have sort of a depressive effect. Whereas with the warriors, the fighters, they have loads of dopamine just binding, and this makes them want to do risky things. They have the invincible feeling. You know, they have less pain perception which is crazy that's why they can go in and fight and not even feel anything you know where's the rest of us we're like no it's okay we'll watch so how common is the gg genotype then i mean no, I, it, studies show that it's not very common um normally i don't, I don't know the exact percentages but uh, i think that we there's a higher percentage of the heterozygous so the gg is homozygous and the, I think it's AG is um, heterozygous. So I think the percentage of heterozygous is more. Most people are kind of straddling that fence. They have one variant that's that's warrior, one variant that's warrior, and it, right. it kind of balances out. So they have like normal dopamine metabolism. Um, yes. And then you have somebody who, so, because when I hear these, you know, we've, we've talked about this or, you know, exchanged emails and, and talked about this in the context of MTHFR, is, you know, I hear, um, about these SNPs and, you know, people put so much focus on MTHFR, but MTHFR is such a common, I mean, it's very common to have, I mean, even uh, homozygous, you know, mutations for different MTHFR SNPs, relatively common, right? So it sounds as, as though, even though we don't have the exact figures right now, but it's like, this is a smaller, much smaller percentage of people that would carry the GG warrior genotype. Exactly. And I think that it would be very interesting if, if, um, People in other risky sports, um, like skydiving and skateboarding, and it would be interesting to get their genotype to see if they also have BG. I mean, it's not fighting, but it's risky, and you need a certain level of fearlessness to actually do these sports. So I think that's definitely something that should be on the cards as well. I don't. That's why it's very small percentage of the population who actually go in and do these sports. So we can't expect that the percentage in the population it could be very high. I mean, it's pretty fascinating stuff, honestly. Like, no, uh, it really is. And I think that that studies will carry on looking at this gene. They'll try and find the SNP in other extreme sports. And I'm sure something will come up there as well.